The name of the piece is, it's a tribute to Deb Mottram Foster, who sadly passed away, and she was a fabulous member of staff at St. Lawrence's uh, Catholic Primary School. The piece that we came up with is a piece of relief sculpture, and in it are 45 figures, and they're all children of all ages belonging to the school, and they're depicted doing a range of positive activities that take place in the school, and also things that um, echo what Deb Mott and Foster did. Part of the commission was right from the start that the children had to be involved. So we did that through a series of workshops and we kept the children involved by getting them to pose for different figures uh, within the piece. So we had one playing tennis, badminton, football, holding up trophies, uh, reading stories to others. Um, and all of the other activities that take place in the piece. My job was to work alongside Phil to organise all the workshops, um, which classes Phil was working in, and um, set up meetings with the school council um, to make sure every child had a chance to um, have a go at making their own relief sculpture, um, which they started off with, you know, just plain, plain clay and building it up. And um, they had half day workshops with Phil. Um, and Phil also then arranged with the school council, um, myself and the learning mentor, John Cushing, to do a photo shoot with the children um, and then to do some sketches as well. well. My class were the trial class for Phil working with them and the children were amazed at his drawings on the whiteboard, um, all of his... for them was to, to get the carving um, tools and kind of hack away at the clay and then they realised no we need to build this up step by step and you know it, it sort of built on as the day went on and from that Phil went and worked with the other classes then. I had a brief background in teaching of 10 years and before that I was working as an artist and then I progressed on to doing workshops with young people. I started off by being self-employed, I did workshops in facial reconstruction so I get the kids to model a skull and then they the optional layer of muscles and skin. So it was a balance between science and art, which I feel is missing in art education these days. I'd done a couple of films for Philip before, and then when he got commissioned um, to do this film for St. Lawrence's School in Kirby, um, he thought it was a good idea to perhaps have the whole process documented, um, also for the benefit of the school. Um, so he suggested that to the school, and then he came to ask me whether I would be willing to do that. And um, I thought it was a fantastic idea, um, because it, I really like to sort of condense uh, long processes into a short story that gives the essence of what's going on. During the commission, I'd worked with Han previously. I was involved with street art, and Han saw the work that I was doing and took an interest, said he liked what I did. And from the beginning, I wanted to bring Han on board, so I thought it was quite a nice thing uh, to actually have some film footage documenting the event. What I liked about this was the interaction that Philip had with, um, with a lot of the, the primary school children and that he invited them to have um, real input um, and the sort of the concept of it, it's sort of um, it's, it's a big panel about five meters wide and it shows a group of 30 maybe even more children all closely packed together doing uh, activities that um, are symbolic of the, the educational philosophy of the school um, and they do that with all sort of props in the hands and some of them are reminders um, of the, uh, the deputy head teacher in whose memory the sculpture was made. Some of them are, um, are symbols of good teaching practice. There's all sort of symbolic stuff there and that make, makes it a very fascinating piece. Deb was uh, a long-standing teacher in our school uh, for many years and then was appointed as deputy uh, about three years ago and was doing a fantastic job and she's embraced our culture and ethos to the full and 
In the September of 2012, um, she very sadly collapsed at the end of a Friday in class um, and was critically ill. And she was rushed to hospital and then diagnosed with a, with a hemorrhage on the brain and was operated on, was getting better. And then four or five weeks later, she uh, had a similar bleed on the brain again. And this time, sadly, she didn't recover. We decided we needed um, a lasting memorial to remember Deb by. And we talked about a piece of sculpture that um, might be an appropriate way to do that. So we commissioned uh, Phil Garrett, the artist, to come and discuss uh, some of our ideas with us. I met with the head and I went away and did a preliminary sketch and this is what I came up with here based on my own memories and experiences of school. I tried to imagine what they would want. Through lots of discussions with children and staff and also with governors as well, we came up with the idea of a, a mural, a sculpted mural. So I showed this one to the school council and I also showed them a second drawing, which I started to develop here. And then the final idea uh, showed children doing a range of activities that embraced our culture and philosophy, really. Here we've got a gymnast, a dancer, somebody in cricket uniform, a female football there holding up the medals, uh, gymnastic rings. And uh, amongst all these children would be a representation of Deb uh, through a hat. Here is the hat with the, the young girl reading a story to them. A summer hat that she used to wear as a teaching aid in class with the children clearly remembered and requested that they be included in the relief sculpture. So after that, I thought instead of, instead of me drawing a home in the studio, why not get the pupils themselves to do a photo shoot and they can act out the composition themselves. lots of photos I'm using as reference material. So from these images, I've started to work on the clay model. And next week, after the Easter half term, I'll take this back and the kids will tell me exactly what they want and what they don't want and we'll evolve the idea further. Thanks for coming out and seeing me today. This, what we've got here, this is a scale model or a maquette. The final one will be four times the size of this. The good thing about working in clay is I can change anything at all. If there's anything you'd like me to add or anything that you'd like me to take away, I can do that. Are you all happy with the shield in between? Yeah. You don't mind that, all right? Well, that's good. Do you want to have a go? Okay, what you can do, if I draw out an area here, See all that area? I'd like to build that up. Can you do it little and often, we say? Right. I need to build this area up here. You get your piece of clay, shape it in your hand, so it sticks to your thumb. See there? Place that on. Try that. And you're right with me right, and a model with me left. So try using both hands as well. Anyone else some, or some clay? Jamie, wear a ponytail. I'll cover facing you know. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, wear a ponytail. Add a bit more clay on that one there. 
I hope you haven't got clay all over your uniforms, have you? Well, I will finish this. I'll model the maquette up, um, and then I'll be making portraits. For example, this figure here. She could be reading a book, and I'll draw the I'll draw the portrait from that angle. Um, this one here in profile. This figure could be looking down at a television screen. Um, and they will all be shot with the light coming from this way because when I work in the studio the light will be coming this way as well which is very important that I get the same lighting conditions as reference really. Another idea was that it gave the figures individuality. They all, one had short curly hair, another one had long straight hair, somebody had a fat chubby face, you know, somebody had a thinner face. Um, some of them are from different ethnicities um, and that gives me enough information then to go from. So the maquette is finished and they like it. And I've now been working for about two weeks on a full-scale version. This is only very, it's very rough, very roughing out stage really, very basic, just trying to draw the big shapes. And then afterwards, I'll start to work on the finer details then. And then I'll use the portraits as reference, um, so it gives them all, all the figures look individual. I'll get the uh, text coming along the bottom and then I'll go back on the figures. It's getting there. I'm just building the figures up and adding more and more detail. So this area here needs to come forward. And the school council are also going to come and visit next week and they'll have a go at sculpting as well. Let's go straight through, yeah, the school there. So this is the work in progress at the moment. Uh, what I want you to do is just find yourself a little space. You want to get rid of the background. Get some modelling clay on your tool and press it in. We'll just go over it like that and we're trying to get it smoother. It's that good. And obviously I could come over it afterwards and refine it if it needed it. What do you think? What do you think? It's good, it's good. Amazing. Amazing, isn't it? I reckon it's good the way he's carved it and everything. It shows like how much he thinks we do in school and how lucky we are. Absolutely fantastic. chose not to render the whole thing smooth and what I've tried to do is I'm, I'm, I'm in the process of keeping the faces young, youthful and I smooth them off and then the uniforms and the figures can be left yeah. um, more impressionistic the concept, sketchy. If you make the, the, the hands and the head smooth and put texture on the clothes and the shoes, yeah. it's contrast and yeah, design. Yeah. Pretty good. That's yeah, very good. I've learnt a lot from it. Learnt a lot. From well, you it. will have done. Yeah. You will have done. Yeah. And I think um, it's good to have another pair of eyes. <laughs> You're the clerk of work. This is uh, silicon, and you mix it with something called a catalyst at the ratio of ten to one. And you can either weigh it, or I mark it off. I always err on the strong side. Apply the silicon to the model. It's expensive stuff, this. You know, so you don't want to waste it. This is called a fiberglass jacket. And the jacket is it keeps the mould underneath rigid. The silicon is the soft material. Um, and the jacket, which is the fiberglass, gives it the stability.
place no good to anyone anymore. Once you get under it, you might find you can leave a big clumps of it off. You just put it back in the clay bin, soak it again and use it again. Well, the mould needs to be completely clean before you start casting. Bronze powder and it's mixed with some resin, fiberglass resin. Uh, catalyst. Now, the more bronze you can load into it, the more bronze it'll be, basically. I like to put three layers on if I can. And after three layers of bronze, I back it up with glass fibre matting to strengthen the piece. The last layer on the inside will also contain bronze to help protect it from the elements. Just try and find a way in. Once it goes, it will go very quick. Shot. No, that's all I'm going to be doing for the next couple of days. A wire wool, the surface of the piece, and exposing the metallic bronze. So then, in effect, you've got real bronze on the outside. It's a little bit too dark, isn't it, really, I think? I've gone to that end, and I was starting to get at this end. I might put another layer of coloured green, transparent green into it. And then, for the most part, I want the bronze to do the work. So, in time, it will start to get a, a green patination on it. Attached on the back are two keyhole fittings that will fit onto two big raw bolts set into the wall. get a lift with the minibus. And you mark off on the wall exactly where it's going to go. I'll drill into the wall two raw bolts in. Then with the help of somebody else, lift it up, offer it up to the wall, locate it, push it onto the bolts, and then just tap it down into place. That's brilliant. Yeah. And then put um, a couple of screws into the wall to prevent it from being lifted up and taken. We gather here today to remember our special friend, colleague and teacher, Deb Mottram Foster. We ask God to give Mrs family and friends the strength to continue in their daily lives. Our school community has lost a fabulous teacher and friend. Help everyone within this school to continue to be the best they can ever be. Lord hear us. Lord graciously hear us. One of the nicest things I've ever heard someone say about someone else is never forget how much we think of you. 
I thought that was a lovely thing to say. And this today is a, a, an aid memoir, something to help you to say we will never forget how much this lady meant to us. So it's a great honour for me to represent you here today. So shall we count one, two, three? One, two, three. There we go. Big clap, everybody.